So I want to introduce our first guest, which is Alejandro Ramirez. Now, Alejandro serves as a liaison public health nurse. And then our next guest is Dr. Zachary Rubin, and he is the chief of the healthcare outreach unit for the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. He's also an infectious disease expert and has served 14 years over at UCLA. Absolutely. Um, good morning, everyone. So before you get the vaccination, um, typically what you have to do is currently you have to uh, register online to see if you are eligible for the vaccine. Our current process is to go online to register for an appointment, a date and a site. And then once you register online and you get an appointment, most of our pods are drive up. Once you're at the pod, um, we identify you um, and then we check you in. And then the nurse makes sure that you don't have any contraindications. If you have any questions, um, you can always ask the nurse. The nurse will try to answer any question you may have. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just nurse of the vaccination and then you wait five, uh, 15 to 30 minutes um, just to see if you have any symptoms. We give you a white immunization card. And then um, typically for our sites, if you in, get one of the vaccinations, you're automatically signed up for the second dose, either 21 or 28 days later. Pretty easy process. For the most part, most people can get through pretty quickly. We'll go over to Dr. Rubin. Well, so the, the vaccine is, so there are two vaccines that are currently under emergency use authorization in the United States. So that's the Pfizer vaccine that came out uh, probably about two weeks before the Moderna vaccine. Both of the vaccines are very similar to each other. So they're both um, based on the same technology, which is uh, called messenger RNA, which is actually made in all of our cells. So basically, if you think about the way influenza vaccines are, it's actually a protein that is derived from an egg uh, a chicken egg, and then they take proteins out of the virus um, that's grown in that egg, and they actually then destroy the virus, and they just have these pieces of protein. They put that in the vaccine, and then they inject the vaccine. And that's how the influenza vaccine works. It, it actually is a protein that gets your immune system then to react to it. And then when your immune system reacts to that vaccine, it generates antibodies that protect you from subsequent exposure to uh, to influenza. So like that, messenger RNA vaccines do the same thing. It's the same idea, which is to get a protein from, from the coronavirus um, that is then presented to your immune system, and then your immune system reacts to it and produces antibodies that protect you against a subsequent um, infection with coronavirus. That's a great question. So yes, um, because COVID can cause severe disease and because you can get reinfected with COVID, it is recommended that those that have had COVID in the past definitely do get the vaccine. Now, you can't get the vaccine if you have COVID currently, but yes, definitely recommended for people who've had COVID as well. well let's talk a little bit about side effects. Well, just for the general public, um, in the studies that were done, about 5% of people had side effects um, after the first shot. And after the second shot, about 20% of people had, um, had side effects as well. And, and these side effects were actually fairly mild. So they last for about one to two days. Usually it's people feeling fatigued. Um, sometimes you feel like a little achy, a low grade fever, things like that. The average length of that, of the symptom lasts for about a day or two. Uh, a lot of times people think that the second shot, you know, is more severe or something, but it's it's not. It, if you look at the trials, the two trials for, for the two vaccines that are currently in the market had a combination of about 77,000 people in the trials and about half of those people got the vaccine. There was a whole host of people that were that got the vaccine. So yeah. there were people that had asthma. There were people that had um, HIV or immune compromised states and were on medication that uh, suppressed their immune system. There were very few exclusions. Um, so most people in that trial were like a reflection of, of real life American population. And they did not find any higher levels of side effects with people who were taking those medications or had those high risk situations. Yeah, so as I said before, I mean, vaccines are, are you know, are obviously different. There's a Moderna va vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine that are handled a little bit differently. They're based on the same um, technology and they basically have the same efficacy. They both are about 94 point something percent effective. So uh, to me, they, they're basically the same, very similar vaccine. Whatever vaccine is available, I think I would just take it if you can get the appointment. 
um, for it. Um, the way we're dealing with it now is we're not really making big distinctions about you know, one vaccine versus the other, um, but you want to make sure you just get the second dose of the same vaccines. It's not important which vaccine you get. It's just important that you kind of complete the, the series with the same vaccine. Yeah, so we know we know that those are the people, again, those are the highest risk people for, for COVID disease, for having bad outcomes for COVID, or people that have like diabetes or asthma or autoimmune disease. We know they do the worst with COVID. So they are a very specific target group to get vaccinated. So we want those people to get vaccinated. Vaccine is safe in those populations. Um, again, they were included in the clinical trials. There are people with all kinds of different um, issues and medical issues in those trials. And it seemed to be effective across all of those things. And those are specifically the people we want to get vaccinated because those are the ones who do the worst when they get the COVID uh, infections. So far, we do know that the um, vaccines are effective with the variants. Um, so yes, and that's a very good question. Yeah, well, it kind of depends on the variant um, and what you know, so I think we're still learning a lot. Um, we do believe that there was a clinical trial for um, one study, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is not on the market yet, that was ongoing in South Africa. And what they found was that um, one of the variants in South Africa that you may have heard of, it was just recently identified in the United States, had a slightly lower uh, level of protection against um, this, this, this variant. And, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that's not effective at all. I mean, it's about, it went from about 90% effective to about 70% effective against that uh, particular variant. You know, there's still a reason to get vaccinated, even if, you know, we do have these kind of variants floating around um, all over the place, um, because they do provide protection. So we do recommend getting the vaccine anyway. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you all for uh, coming on. Hope you have a great day.